Welcome back. You're with us on Monday's edition of Rise and Shine. I did mention before going into the break that we're going to have a very important person on board Rise and Shine who's going to talk about a very important topic, a much talked about topic uh, these days when it comes to uh, management or uh, when it comes to motivation or when it comes to leadership. Uh, well, he's currently the, he's a currently a corporate trainer. He is a lecturer at five different treasury institutes uh, and, uh, well, I can go further on and on about uh, what he does because he's uh, obviously a professional academic lecturer of uh, many institutes and uh, I just can't figure out how he would find the time to put all that in together but he's been one of the leading persons when it comes to leadership and motivation in Sri Lanka. A very good morning to you Mr. Mario Fonseca. Good morning. Very Kosala. good morning to you. Good morning Johnny. All right, uh, starting off things, so like say, looking at uh, what I've been given, it's like it's <laughs> a lot of things <laughs> that comes in. So first of all, um, just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background, how you got into all this. Uh, well, I started my career in finance, um, moved into corporate planning. Uh, then I was a general manager mm -hmm. for a short time. Then I decided uh, I had to be on my own. Um, didn't quite like at a certain stage in my career, of course, not the early stages, but um, having to uh, do someone else's thing, I want to do it my way. So at the age of 31, I started on my own. And ever since that was in 2004, and ever since um, I'm a trainer, consultant, lecturer, that's what I do. All right, uh, coming into, uh, like say, you are uh, specialized in finance, marketing, and HR. Mm -hmm. mm. So if you just elaborate on those segments that... Uh, I'm a fellow member of CIMA. Right. Uh, as well as I'm a member of Chart Digital Marketing. Uh, my MBA I did uh, with a specialization in HR. So I, I wanted to get a good grasp of management mm -hmm. because, uh, as I said, I wanted to rise in jam management at one point and that's why I wanted to kind of uh, focus on those areas, those three specific areas, because I felt those are the three most important areas um, for a person who wants to be a CEO or GM, or, you know, of that level. So uh, you've uh, probably mastered in management. You've, you've spoke of management more than the other two, finance and uh, HR. When it comes to management and uh, taking up uh, lecturing uh, to students, what is the main key point that you will remind them when you go into a class of a management uh, student? For them to prepare in, in co for their corporate life? When it's, when it's your, when, if, it's, if you're the lecturer mm -hmm. and you're lecturing the students, what's the first key point you will say? You see, it's like this. Uh, with your manager or leader, you've got to get things done. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people who have to, get it, who have to do it uh, have to want to do it. So I think uh, the focus should be on that. How do I, um, because it doesn't, uh, it's not the same thing for different people. And I think a manager's or leader's job is to identify his people, his team, and uh, sometimes have a slightly different strategy. I'm not talking about favoration, but uh, igniting different people from different angles mm -hmm. and um, trying to get the best out of them. Uh, uh, Mr. Mario, like I said, you did mention about uh, finance, marketing and HR. Mm -hmm. uh, so are they all interlinked or is there any connection that are, or are they on different paths? That they go in? Well, it's like this, you see, we were all working in business, isn't it? We don't necessarily work in compartmentalized areas. And I'm an ardent uh, believer that you shouldn't have that compartmentalization too much. Then it leads to a lot of departmentalization. Departments are important, but you must think business. You must not think finance, I'm finance, you know, I always do this when I do that, you know, uh, finance, marketing, HR, that kind of narrow focus mm -hmm. gets on other people's nerves and the job doesn't get done also, in my opinion. And I promote that particularly when I uh, teach and when I talk about these subjects. All right, so coming back to, to you the topic. To, yeah, coming back to the topic that we want to highlight sure. more today is because about leadership yeah. and motivation. So when it comes to leadership and motivation, obviously they both link in together. Yeah. So if you could just uh, elaborate or describe us what leadership is really and then how you get motivated into leadership. Um, I mean, if you consider what leadership is, Kosala, I think leadership has to be taken in context. You have a leader, you have to have a follower. You can't have a leader without a follower. Then people will call you a madman. <laughs> I mean, if you call yourself a leader and nobody's following you. Mm -hmm. um, there has to be a relationship between these two parties. Okay, and there has to be a situation, meaning uh, the follower needs you because of the situation, context. If the, you see, always followers tend to look up to leaders and the reason why they look up is because there needs to be something that comes from the leader towards them. So 
uh, it's important that uh, you understand that and the lead operates in that context. So, I mean, to connect up motivation, um, the leader, while, I mean, inspiring and motivating, uh, you also have to get, it, get things done. You can't do everything alone. The leader has to be visionary, has to see things, but things have to happen from the followers most of the time. So, they are again, like I said before, the followers must want to do it, as I said, not be told to do it. So it's not authority, but I believe it's influence. Because authority, you know, will work when you're there. But when you're not there, are they doing it? So I think influence, and that's where the motivation comes in. Well, well they say leaders are born, not made. So if you can elaborate. <laughs> well, I beg to differ on that. This is a, di I'll, no, this this is is a debate that, that has gone on. I, mean, I think it's as old as management itself. Yeah. What I would like to think is it's a bit of both, okay? Uh, we can't deny when we see leaders coming out of leaders, as in born to leaders, that uh, are, I mean, uh, there has to be something genetic, something from that background. But still for all, I believe it's their learning. You see, you also find sometimes two, say, father and mother who are you know, really brilliant leaders, and there's a son or daughter who's, uh, you know, I don't want to call them names, but you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So then what happened? Uh, does the father and mother become less leaders as a result of that? I don't think so. So, I believe there is a uh, learning that happens. Context matters, Your, I mean, the upbringing matters. By, but I believe it's a bit of both. Because if leaders cannot be made, then there's no point in talking about leadership in business schools. Mm -hmm. So they have not stopped doing that. Because leaders can be made. And we can learn leadership. And I mean, any leader would admit that they never fell from the sky. I mean, they all picked up things along the way. Now, uh, that, uh, when it comes to leadership, yep. there are a lot of training programs, if it's uh, either corporate or even school-wise for students. So many people take up leadership training programs within that uh, career. How important is it, a leadership program for a student or a, a person uh, in uh, the work uh, area? I myself conduct some of this stuff, so I'm, <laughs> I, I would, people would think I'm biased in saying this, but how, how, how I see it is this, it is important, but you see, it's like this, I can conduct a program on leadership or someone else can do a program on leadership, but the person being trained must first admit that this is something that he or she requires and must want to improve. And then if they focus on such a program, given that the program is good, I'm sure they will learn. I'm sure they will, uh, I mean, uh, rise up in their leadership qualities, I mean, become better. Uh, but I don't think just because, I'm, for example, you know, you have situations where Say the manager says, hey, leadership, you, you go, you go, you go for this. Mm -hmm. And he does, he arrives and, he, and sometimes you ask him, why are you here? I don't know, the manager <laughs> sent me. Uh, that kind of thing is not going to work. I, I think no I was going to ask you that question, like say, <laughs> when it comes to these um, many institutes or many uh, companies, they say, you see a program saying uh, leadership, uh, then you just send your people into it, but then that doesn't solve it. Like it has to come in with the person within you to try and... Because like, I think it has to be linked with uh, training needs analysis in an organization. Uh, people have to have a large say I mean, when I say people, the employer has to have large say in what he or she needs. Of course, the manager also would see what uh, his uh, juniors need to be trained on. But still for all, uh, I would say if you're not motivated, I mean, you're not going to learn anything. Not leadership, nothing. I mean, if you're motivated, you'll learn anything. So, right, so, mo yeah, okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, so you need motivation to take up anything. Say, if it's a goal in life, if it's your vision, if it's uh, a job that you need to do, or if it's to be the person you are, you need that motivation. How do you give that motivation to your students or to the people you lecture? I think you need to inspire them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a person who believes in the idea of inspiring people towards greatness. You see, if you take the role of a coach, I also used to play um, basketball a long time ago. Now, I might look as if I followed <laughs> the ball, but anyway. Um, one thing I learned when I played basketball was, uh, I mean, the role of a coach Sometimes the coach is not necessarily able to do all the stuff that the player can do. But it's about not only giving the skill, but it's also about inspiring people towards greatness. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe uh, as a teacher, trainer, lecturer, coach, you have to be able to inspire people. And uh, that has to come from genuineness, uh, believing in what you say, and uh, being able to plant those seeds of inspiration in, in those young minds so that um, they will produce results or fruit later on. 
So going by the saying that you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink it, but it's down to the coach or the trainer to make sure that the horse drinks it. Uh, the co I, I, I mean, if I were to relate to that, I would say it's a coach's job to get the horse interested in the water to the extent that horse doesn't want anything other than the water. Mm -hmm. And that's the difficult part of inspiration. So you say that inspiration and motivation, they both do go in color. Coincide. Yeah, because if you're inspired, you're motivated, isn't it? I mean, you're inspired to do something. So motivation is that inner drive that comes from within to do or not to do something. So you have to be inspired. You must want it. You must. And also, I believe there's a futuristic orientation as well. Always, whatever we do is for the future. It's never for the past or not even for the present. So you must want something better in the future, I believe. And uh, it's, it's for the leader or the coach to ignite that need. Yes, indeed. And to be an inspirational person, to make yourself an example, is a very hard yes. thing. It's a very hard thing to make uh, you, yourself, an inspirational person for the others. So that is probably something very important when it comes to lecturing. Yeah. If I may ask you, who was, who, or who was your or what was your inspiration? For lecturing? Oh. To be who you are right now. You spoke of inspiration. What was your inspiration? Well, it's like this. You see, who I am now was not necessarily something that I really dreamt of or visioned when I was very young. My vision has changed over the years. You know, when I was in school, I was happy to be an accountant. Then later I realized I could be a little bit more than that. Then I thought being a GM or something like that would be what it is. Then I realized, no, I need to be on my own. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also a case of um, what you want for life. So um, I don't think, I, I, I mean, I would be wrong in saying, am I, when I was small, somebody inspired me and I have become that exactly, you know, uh, okay. I've not taken any U-turns, but I've taken some side turns, you know. Um, so um, I've tried to reinvent myself over the years, look at people and get inspired. And I would say there are many people, not, I wouldn't put it down to one. But something that I always believed in and I, something that I tell people is, don't just do something, do it really well. Mm -hmm. Find that thing that you can do really well. And I think that's where I am now. I mean, I love what I do. Um, I love what I did, but I didn't love it as much as I do it now. I like to impart, I, I, I mean, the impartation is something that I like. So, um, so being a trainer as well as a lecturer helps me to do that. So that, I don't think I was something, that, that was something that I was I mean, aspiring to when I was very young, but it got molded along the way. Coming back yeah. to, okay, say like the parents or if say a person in the school, a, a school, a, a child, for example, who's studying, like a lot of parents do tell them, you need to do this, you need to do that. Like what, 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 uh, what, what, do you, what is your thing uh, about that? Well, um, good that you raised that course because um, mm -hmm. I totally go against that thinking. Uh, my belief is this, and I think it's backed by facts as well from what I've seen. You see, you must it's your as a teacher as a parent it's your job to identify who your child is your child is not you sometimes parents try to achieve what they couldn't achieve through the children and that's wrong that's another individual I think you need to understand um, what they're good at find out what they're good at and um, I mean they must like it these two things normally go together you can't hate something that you like yeah mm -hmm. so when you like something and you're also good at it, you will go very far. And it's the job of the parents to, from a uh, very small age, to find, understand the child. What is he or she interested in? And then nurture that. And I think if you can do that, I mean, um, there'll be great people, not just mediocre people, you know? Uh, because sometimes when you push somebody into a profession, uh, they become mediocre. And I know enough people who have started sometimes in a profession and later on, they started because there, there was pressure from somewhere. And later on in life, they realized, oh no, this is not what I want to do, and they take a total U-turn. Sometimes some of that years is wasted. I wouldn't say all of it was wasted, but sometimes certain years is wasted because now they're in something else. So sometimes the U-turn works, sometimes it might not work. Yeah. And um, I mean, if they had guidance properly at the right age, I think uh, they would have achieved more. So I think that that is a lot of you know, a lot that goes through a lot of people. Like as you said, they've been forced, forced to, forced to. Uh, uh, do that, but then they suddenly realize that, you, as you said, that no, this is not what I want to do. I think it's good as to the uh, parents that, to, as you said, to identify, okay, this is what is needs to be done, exactly. not to force it. I think that is something uh, is common in Sri Lanka. They force your child to do this. 
uh, I think uh, they do it all out, out of love. I mean, they want the children to be better. It's just that they don't understand that. I mean, it's like this. You can't take a round peg and put it into a square hole. Mm -hmm. You see, the child is a certain personality. You got to put him into a round hole. Then he'll be comfortable. He'll be good. If not, when you push it, you know what happens. Some parts of either the hole or the peg will break. <laughs> so that's what happens. Uh, and I know people who sometimes are in these different, I mean, the wrong area, I would say. And what happens is um, they're not content. And some may take the U-turn. Some just live on. And then they become mediocre because they're not very happy. When they get up on Monday, they say, oh, Monday. They're looking forward to the Friday. I mean, <laughs> I would like to say I'm, today I'm at a place where I don't, I don't have a Monday. I don't have a Friday. Because, you treat uh, every day as it. Not that I treat. I, I just feel that all seven days are the same for me. Because I, it was not the case. <laughs> I'm not saying I was always like that. But I have come to a place where I'm like that. No. And I don't have holidays. I don't have work days. I'm, I'm, I, I work for myself. Somebody said, I, I'm not quite sure who said this. Uh, find something you like to do. And you'll never have to work a single day. Because when, when your heart is in it, you don't see it as work. True. And that's, I think, where people make the mistake. And also coming back to the fact that when when you like say when you're forced into do something or that you are not that you don't like, then you, the uh, practical knowledge that you gain might be less because you might be into more the studious type. You just come there and then because of that you keep doing your job. But then the practical knowledge you gain by the job is very uh, remote. Yeah, because the thing is, as you said, uh, again there's no motivation there. Where there's no motivation, there's no great results. Again, like I said before, there's mediocrity. There'll be results, but nothing great. Yeah, the fact is that the pa the people who guide the children from the small days, uh, the say the parents or the teachers, and all of these people need to identify that because the child himself, him or herself, cannot figure out certain things sometimes. Maybe the guidance is important. Now this is where it comes in. I mean, it's true that the children is, the children are unable to know enough to decide. Mm -hmm. That's where the parents and the teachers, the adults, must show the options, exactly. not choose it for them. Exactly. You see, uh, this is what a medical doctor would mean, this is what uh, an engineer would mean, you know, so, but it's also fitting the person's personality, because personality will mold what, I mean, determine, will determine what you're good at, because we are all not good at the same thing, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where the problem will come. All right, uh, Mr. Mario, uh, coming back to, we talked about leadership, we talked about motivation, tell us a little bit about team building. Oh. You see, th these are like three cornerstones if you take it. Because when you take the leader and the follower, it's not follower, it's followers. So all those, the, the two parties together is the team. And I believe the leader's job is actually to develop a strong team. Because the leader can't always be there. If the leader has always got to be there for results to be achieved, then it's like, you know, the, the father or mother for a child. But, you know, these are adults we're talking about. So. Uh, you need to build a strong, I mean, team a spirit. And I like to, I mean, the World Cup just finished. I mean, if you look at who became champions, it was the team, team. that became the champion. Sure. Uh, the, the sides that had the stars, well, I'm not saying Germany doesn't have stars, but somehow people don't talk about those stars as much as some of the other stars. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing happened in the NBA Finals this year as well. And I think I actually put an FB post on this. Uh, because the team, I mean teamwork won against individual brilliance. There, there's so much that only an individual can do. So uh, it's a job of the leader to uh, build great teams. And that's why I said the inspiration comes in. So it's not inspiring one person, but inspiring your team. And having an atmosphere of trust where people can learn and grow, where mistakes are tolerated. Uh, not that you encourage them, but mm -hmm. the mistakes are tolerated as a learning experience. And you become better and better. So, yes, team, teamwork is the other side of it, actually. So, at the end of the day, you're all human, so you're bound to make mistakes, so the leader needs to... <laughs> I understand, understand that factor as well. Of course. Because the thing is, um, it's a case of understanding what their potential is. Mm -hmm. just, just because they made a mistake, that doesn't, you know, erase everything they've done. As long as they learn. You see, what I always tell sometimes my students is, you know, in a little more blunt man, I say this, it's okay to fall into a hole. But don't keep falling into the same hole. Mm -hmm. Then you're an idiot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you go searching for holes to fall also. <laughs> Try and avoid them. But it's okay to fall once in a while. But also talking of falling, I mean, if you fall three times, you'll get up five, four times. Because you are up early also. 
So it's a case of rising, you know, rising like a phoenix rising from the ashes. So uh, I believe that mindset is important for an individual if they are going to do well in life. Yes, indeed. And we, we're coming to corporate training, Kursal, and uh, when it comes to the corporate sector, it is also important because sometimes people, you know, get into that uh, routine where they wake up in the morning, go to work, and then, you know, the, the whole idea is to get that uh, probably the monthly salary so that you can go on with the rest of your life or something like that. It just becomes their routine, not uh, their passion when it comes to what they've chosen. When it comes to corporate training and motivating people in the corporate sector, how important is it? I know it's very important for a company to you know, go ahead and reach higher levels. When it comes to your point of perspective and going into that. You see, it's like this. Um, I mean, if I were to relate it to myself, something that I always tell myself, and I tell this too, especially when I do train the trainer type of thing, I say I picture myself as a person who has a board, a big board, okay, with a string around me. Can you picture that, you know, a string and a big board? Mm. This big board has one letter. Can you guess what that letter is? It's an English letter. L. A big L. L, okay. And uh, I picture myself wearing this. And I'll never take this off. Okay, and I'll go to the grave with this. Meaning you need to be an attitude of learning right throughout your life. I mean, uh, we can achieve qualification, but qualifications are just, you know, milestones. But learning is lifelong and that's where training comes in as well and I think some corporates have understood that and uh, they believe in this and they invest in it because people have to update their skills. They have to be in attitude of learning then only they'll become better. If not, you know, you have the same stuff yesterday and you're not going to get any new results tomorrow with the same stuff. So learning is very important, training is very important. Or, or a common thing that is among the years, you know, or a myth we will say, uh, when it comes to doing things, mata so coming to time management, how do you look at it? You see, uh, <laughs> I train on time management by the way, and I specifically address this course. I say, it's a, it's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. You see, <laughs> I had a boss who wants, uh, not only me, I mean he used to tell everyone, he says, everyone has 24 hours in the day, you decide what you do with it. You see, nobody has more time or less time, let's face it. It's a matter of priority. When you say, I did not have time, what we really mean is, I did not have time for this, but I had time for something else. Because we all got 24 hours. So it's a case of priority. So there's nothing called, I did not have time. Because if you had less than 24 hours, then yes. <laughs> but if you had the same 24 hours that we all have, then it's a matter of priority. It's a matter of putting it into practice. Like say, there is nothing saying that there is no time. If you really have the application, you can obviously put it into a yeah, place. If you want it, you'll do it. You'll find time. I mean, uh, let's take this, let's say um, someone who uh, does not exercise, okay, now says I don't have time, he goes to a doctor, gets a bad report, now doctor says, my friend, if you don't exercise, this is what will happen, will you or will you not exercise there, exercise there after, you will. now his priorities have changed, now he knows this is life threatening, I need to get mac right, he'll cut somewhere else and do it, so it's like that. True enough. <laughs> Quite impressive. That is what most people say. You know, I don't have time for this, but uh, truly, you have time for everything. When you're cornered, just... when you're pressed to a corner, you'll find time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, coming into the other aspects that uh, you have been given into highlight, uh, marketing and branding is also something that you highlight yeah. during your... Just a little bit on that. Well, it's like this. I mean, uh, today, whether we like it or not, it's a commercial world. And everything is a brand. I mean, I know people who talk about individuals also as brands. Um, but coming back more of the more to the products itself, you see, um, brands are a personality, brands are an identity, and I always tell my marketing students, uh, before you get inside the customer's wallet, you have to get inside their head, because if you are inside the head, inside their head, then you don't have to worry about getting inside their wallet, because the head will tell, the head will pull out the wallet and pay for you, pay, pay for your product. So, brands are very important. I mean, I would say brands is the heart of marketing. I mean, you, we can't survive without heart. So, I mean, just actually picture a world without brands. Take all the brands away. We'll have products, cars, toys, you know, TVs. You know, somebody said the world would be cheaper. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but it would also be dull. True. Because there's no identity. There's, I mean, when I say Coca-Cola, there's a personality. When I say Volvo, there's a personality. And also the competitiveness will go off. Yeah, because it's branding that helps companies to differentiate. You can't differentiate against your competition 
if you don't have a brand which has personality and identity. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mario Fonseca. I think we really touched on a lot of important topics, important things that uh, people will really take from uh, your discussion. I think uh, time definitely permits us. Yeah. We're going to go on and on uh, talking about all these topics that you've uh, highlighted. It's just really uh, Amazing. Uh, interesting that even we've uh, picked up a lot of things from. I think our viewers would have picked up a lot of things. So thank you very much for taking your time you. and coming. Thank you so on board much. Rise. Yeah, thank we you. hope to see you on some uh, another oh, edition of uh, Rise and Shine definitely. as well, because there's so much that we could talk about. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. With that, it's time for us to say our bye bye. So, Monday morning. Hope you enjoyed the show as both of us enjoyed presenting it to you. We shall see you same time, same place tomorrow. Not us, but the team from Rising Channel will be there with us. So, till then, take care and it's goodbye from Have us. Have a pleasant day ahead.